the sign-up sheet for public comment, I believe, <coughs> right up the top front there. to agenda item number five should be briefly um, any member of the public who'd like to speak will have up to three minutes to speak and, um, after, and that, that period is not interactive so any questions won't be answered during that period and after that public comment period only those who are on the agenda will be um, will be speaking unless a member of the audience gets recognized by this committee so that's how that'll work um, and We'll, I'll announce that this me meeting is being audio and video recorded, and um, we'll move to agenda item number four. I'll move to approve the minutes of March 5th. I'll take a minute to move with this. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Um, so that brings us to public comment. So if anyone would like to speak, we have up to three minutes. Um, I'd just like to remind everyone that th this, is, this is a discussion of the rescission of the receipts reserve account for appropriation fund. And, um, and it's limited only to that. If anyone would like to speak, feel free. Right into the discussion of the of the order itself. Um, <clears throat> I move we close public comment. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Um, now I'd like to I'd like to hear from uh, the fire department, specifically Assistant Chief Wayne Nichols and Deputy Chief Chris Norris, um, if you have anything to present to us. I know uh, Chief Duggan uh, presented a memo that uh, you got. I don't know how you want to enter that. Uh, I, I, I circulated it to Council of Daniels. The Chief didn't send it to everybody. Do you have any paper copies of that? I got one copy here. No. He's probably the one who didn't get it. Mm -hmm. right, so. Yeah, we'll a memo from uh, Fire Chief Brian Duggan to the Public Safety Committee. Uh, he is attending a Homeland Security training program and unable to attend the April 2nd meeting of the Public Safety Committee. Chairman Adams has asked me to provide a memo relative to the recession of the Emergency Medical Reserve Receipt Account. Uh, an overview. Revenue collected from the EMS Transport Service is paid to the City of Northampton and not the Northampton Fire Department. The revenue is then deposited in the EMS Reserve Receipt Account and available for appropriation by the City Council. As the revenue needs to be in the account prior to appropriation, Deputy Chief Norris appears before the Council requesting several transfers per year. If the order to rescind, rescind the EMS Reserve Receipt Account is approved, these funds will then be deposited into the General Fund and will be appropriated in anticipation of revenue on an annual basis. This change would take effect concurrent with the start of the fiscal 2013 budget. Uh, through this would reduce the need for periodic transfers. The costs associated with EMS are volume driven and if both volume and revenue increase, an adjustment transfer may be required at the close of the fiscal year. As an advocate for both my personnel and the department, for my personnel and the department, I just like any other department head in the city would prefer a dedicated revenue stream 
as it allows the clear ability to project and plan for the shifting needs of the program. This question is a reflection of the financial management practices, and I believe that two key principles are important. First, the critical aspect of EMS operations is the appropriation provided through the City Council. And second, these funds can only be spent once. During fiscal 2012, we are expected to collect $1.75 million and expend $1.63 million. On average, an additional 150 million is required for capital expenditures. Based on the skill of Deputy Chief Norris, we have exceptional success obtaining grants and require no capital appropriation during fiscal 2012. Communities across the Commonwealth are split as many deposit funds into the general fund while others use their reserve receipt appropriation account for this purpose. Either way, the City Council still needs to appropriate these funds and I need to advocate for the resources necessary to do our job safely and effectively. This translates into the real question of not being the structure of the account but the recognition by the Council that failing to appropriate sufficient resources will deteriorate the capabilities of the exceptional system that we have built. Reflections on Northampton's EMS program. As we developed the EMS system, our collective vision was to create an exceptional program and work with our people. We have done just that. The quality of our efforts have been recognized by both the mayor and our patients. Examples of the unique advanced procedures that we offer are uh, the continuous airway pressure, CPAP, which reduces the need for more invasive procedures and assists the breathing of people that have fluid in their lungs. This reduces the potential of hospital admission and ultimately reduces the need to place a patient on a ventilator. Cardiac rhythm transition to Bay State Medicals, which reduces the time to surgical cardiac intervention. Automated CPR machines, which increases the outcome of our patients as well as safety of our responders. Power stretchers, which reduce injuries and provide the patient with more comfort. Personnel that are inter-facility transfer certified and pediatric advanced life support training. In short, the quality of both our service and our staff is exceptional. As an example of our level of service quality, last week a man came into my office to thank my staff for the exceptional job that they did saving his life. Two months ago, this man went into cardiac arrest while shoveling snow. During this response, we utilized the automated CPR machine, drug therapy, airway management, and defibrillation in the patient more than a half a dozen times. This is a tangible example of the staff and equipment needed to provide the quality service that we have sought to provide. Concerns from our people. This discussion has generated concern among our personnel. Much of this concern stands as a reflection of their buy-in and pride. I am sure that these concerns will be presented to the Public Safety Committee by our staff. Some of these concerns are summarized below. The equipment and staffing required providing the quality program we have created could be diluted and the program as well as patient care could suffer. Our personnel feel strongly about this point as they are frustrated with our inability to replace fire apparatus as approved within the capital plan. These funds would not be exclusively available for the department use and our personnel believe that the creation of this account was a foundational aspect of creating the EMS system. End of the memo. And I, and I would just like to add you know, my thoughts that uh, certainly I, I think having them go to the general fund wouldn't be a positive for the program, but uh, I support my people and the equipment needs out there and, and feel that it, it's up to the council and the mayor as to their direction that they want to go with this and uh, kind of summarize the, the feelings of Chief Duggan. The same there. Thank you, Deputy Chief Norris. At this time, I don't know. At this point, I'd like to invite Michael Hatch, President of the Northampton Firefighters, IAFF 108. Thank you, sir. <coughs> okay. Mr. Hatch, sir. Um, you're welcome to speak throughout the discussion. You can sit in. Oh, okay. Thank you.
to start by thanking you guys um, for being willing to entertain our thoughts and hear our concerns on this. You know, speak on behalf of the, the ladies and gentlemen here of the local and those who couldn't be here for a variety of other reasons. I'm going to try and keep my comments as brief and pertinent as possible to the, the subject of the EMS account. Uh, I think in order to do that, we need to talk about the history of where it, where it came from. Um, this program was a, really a foundation was built on a collaboration between ourselves and the administration at the time, started back in 2003, 2004. Um, excuse me, our members at the time put in a lot, of, a lot of work to investigate, you know, what was out there, what services were out there, what were the needs of the city, what we could do, and how we could build out this program in a manner that was, you know, feasible for the city and cost, you know, with um, provisions for cost overruns and avoiding all those things and building a sustainable program. It was a partnership in every sense of the word. You know, there was values that were established, and those values that were established were life safety, patient care, reputation, and fiscal responsibility. It was the local, and again, in collaboration with the administration, that recognized that if we created a program that wasn't fiscally responsible or sustainable, it wouldn't be supported by the council and by the community. And that's really what's gotten us to this point. The memo that was submitted by Chief Duggan, I agree with some of the things that you put in there, but I also take issue with the fact that there hasn't been a discussion and he's speaking on our behalf when we haven't met collaboratively as we have in the past. It's been a significant amount of time and despite our efforts to resolve some of these things and speak collaboratively on this issue um, as we should be now, um, there's a, a big disconnect between us. <clears throat> there was a 2009, I think as you all recall, uh, tough fiscal times. Um, Mayor Higgins had presented some things with, with the budget, and there were some issues that happened with our private provider at the time, which was Ambicare Ambulance Service. They had submitted their intent to leave, uh, a high-pressure situation for everybody involved with our need to provide 911 services to the city. Um, we were essentially put into the position where we needed to, to step forward and, and accept responsibility of the 911 for the city. It was at that, that point we believed that some of the changes that were made to our program and the financial concerns that go with it um, failed, I guess, for lack of, a, lack of a better way to describe that. Um, the change in adding ambulances, adding equipment, and adding personnel weren't properly cost and prepared for with allocations for future funds. Um, the point that we're at now in discussing whether the city's going to take this account or not to take this account um, really is, um, again, I appreciate the time, but there hasn't been the adequate study in the financials at least to this point. I hope that the intent of the council, either through the process of investigating this or in deciding to, to leave this thing as a status quo, that there will be some, some more focus on the financial aspect of our program. The whole intent of this reserve receipt account was to, you know, for accounting and transparency, it was a suggestion by, I believe it was the city at the time, to, you know, make it a transparent process for all involved. So anybody could look at it, it's revenue in, revenue out, and really prove to the taxpayers and to the city that we were trying to be um, as fiscally responsible as possible. It clearly states that the, uh, the money collected should be used for our staffing and our equipment and not for non-essential stuff. We've spoken openly about this, some of the things in, in, in the past, and I'm not going to try and go down that road here, but we've, we've taken a look at some of the spending things that have kind of left us in a, in a question for the future. Um, one of the reasons that our, our members are here, of course, today is because this memo really came out of nowhere from the mayor a couple weeks ago. There's a lot of uncertainty. Um, you know, staffing is, we have 24 firefighter paramedics or firefighter EMTs who are paid out of this account. There's uncertainty of what's going to happen to those positions in the future. There's problems with, you know, equipment acquisitions and other things. Um, I think uh, the chief did justice in outlining some of the, the technologies that we've had. If you recall the presentation that I made during the public comment, outlined some of those things as well. We've had some cutting edge equipment well before other communities, and we've had that equipment available to the citizens well before any state mandate or any other service because of this account. And as a fire-based agency, you know, we, we have the ability, because of this account and the positions that come out of it, our staffing levels have gone up and we are safer than we were before EMS. We still have a long way to go in some regards, and we can, you know, cross those bridges, I guess, when we get there or in, in forms different than this one. 
but we're, we're better now than we were. And while you know the mayor stated um, during the meeting, and I believe it's the intent of the council and the public safety committee to, to maintain to maintain the, the, the quality of the program, I think it's inherent with any city budget in difficult times to, to look at the places to, for cuts to be made. And with discussion now about level funding and all that, that equals, that equals cuts. And we're, we're concerned that we're not gonna maintain this the gains that we've made over the, the recent years um, if this money is taken to, to the general fund. And also we're gonna lose that transparency and accounting function that we've really touted over the years and sold to the community. Our business is one that's built on staffing. Um, you know, it takes people to run the ambulances, it takes paramedics to run the ambulances, it takes a lot of people to put out fires, it takes a lot of people to rest, a lot of firefighters to rescue the citizens. And our concern is that, moreover than the financial aspect of this program, is that there's going to be a guarantee to, to maintain these things, to maintain the people. Um, again, it sounds like that is the commitment from, from the city at this point. However, there hasn't been a discussion that's been outlined to what's the where's the why's in the house of that, which is of concern to, to our organization. It is obviously the um, the intent of our of our organization to maintain the account as it was, you know, with some some oversight, with some more um, tighter reins on the spending, so to speak, to keep it for its intended purposes, as it was outlined um, in our contract, EMS Article Five, which says it's going to be used for capital expenditures for EMS and for future staffing. Um, it, it started off that way. Um, things were only for EMS, only for staffing. We've gotten off track from that in recent years. You know, we'd like to see that get back on track. You know, the whole reason for reserves, and if you read on in the article, it says budgeted surpluses, that there are supposed to be, you know, tight strings on the first that says we're going to keep this money because we know that, as Chief Duggan said in his letter, that it, it's volume driven. The more calls that we do, there's a potential to make more revenue, but there's also, you know, more expenses, and it's just mm -hmm. very difficult to budget and manage in that regard. So the, the whole intent is to, to save some money for years going forward when we have lower off years. Uh, Chief Norris, if you care to chime in here, I believe we made 1.9 million last year, and this year we're on track for 1.6. You know, a few hundred thousand dollars difference, you know, diff difficult to budget, difficult to manage. And my final thought here is the fact that the, the reserve receipt account came apart as the collective bargaining process with our contract. That language was bargained in as part of the agreement, it was part of that collaboration. And our opinion is if that is if that language is going to go away and things are going to change, that it should be bargained out of the contract. This, the city council has readily stated through the course of their business that they are not a bargaining entity, and that happens with the mayor behind closed doors in executive session. And we feel that that would be <coughs> overstepping the scope of the position here with this group to amend a contract outside of a collective bargaining process. So at this time, uh, on behalf of the members of the local, um, requesting the Public Safety Committee refer this matter back to the mayor and request that we uh, impact bargain. Um, we are absolutely willing to, to bargain and discuss changes with the language, changes with the program, any other needs and um, you know, other possible avenues and other situations that go with it. Um, but I just we don't feel that it would be appropriate for uh, any changes to our contract to be made outside of negotiations and we'd absolutely be willing to, to separate this issue um, from ongoing negotiations and deal with it as, one, as its own separate issue. But our preference obviously would be to maintain the account the status quo. So at this point, I'd like to ask Mayor Narkowitz to step forward and address us if you'd like to. Good afternoon. Mayor, you may also sit if you wish. That's okay, I'll stand. Uh, uh, so I think the, um, the resolution that you have before you outlines the uh, sort of the background in terms of the, um, the establishment of the receipt preserve for, for uh, ambulance services that was established in 2003 and, uh, and walks through the fact that the, um, that the program has been developed now into a, into a full 24-hour uh, 
service, and my goal in the FY13 budget is to fully integrate, uh, sort of to, to formalize that integration between uh, fire and EMS, and so uh, that's that's why I put forth this uh, this proposal to to change, move away from the receipt reserve account, uh, and have the uh, EMS come into the general fund. Again, I want to be clear that. Um, Right now, we have uh, other accounts in the city, uh, where whether it's the recreation department, whether it's the parking department, where we have where someone pays a fee to the city for a service, and we show that fee on a separate line item in our budget. Um, and essentially, we would have a, another line item in our budget that would say uh, ambulance receipts. So we would continue to track ambulance receipts separate from every other revenue source, from taxes, from every other general source we track that um, so we would not lose the ability to track how much uh, came in from ambulance revenues the other piece of it is as we right now we just went through our budget process where we developed the budget uh, for uh, where we were beginning the process of developing the fire and EMS budget I met with the chief I met with the uh, assistant chief and deputy chief Norris to go through this process Right now, we set out at the beginning of the year, and we try to essentially set a budget for EMS. We figure out the number of personnel. We, we estimate, uh, based on call volume, historic, what we think those are going to be. We also work with the contractual obligations for pay and, and incentive pay and stipends and all that. Um, and then we put together a budget. Um, then what happens throughout the year is Deputy Chief Norris, as you all know, comes to the city council. I think it, I think it was about five times this year where he comes and then we uh, we actually appropriate funds to go to it. Um, again, I, I, I believe we will be able to put together a very uh, you know, a sound budget for FY13 that will make sure that we maintain all of the, uh, you know, the ambulance service that we've developed to date. And I, I, I really view this as a change that's going to um, change the way we account for the funds. <coughs> But I do not believe it's going to impact operations in the fire and EMS department in any way. And I wouldn't bring something forward that would jeopardize that. I believe we'll be able to, uh, and I think we have evidence of other departments that we run similarly, uh, whether it's DPW, whether it's the police department. Um, I don't believe that anyone could say that we, uh, that this council or, or any council before it has jeopardized public safety given the way that we budget through the general. So that's, that's the approach, and, and I'm, I'll also say that we're going to be coming forward with additional orders uh, in the next month or so to eliminate some other receipt reserved accounts that we have. Um, uh, again, as, as an effort to try to uh, bring more things into the general fund so that we can then uh, budget departments similarly. So uh, that's, that's the proposal, and I'm happy to answer any question, questions that you have. So then this is essentially an accounting change. Rather than going into reserve account, it goes into a line item of the general fund so that we don't need to vote every time we want to move money out of the account to fund the operation. That's correct. And, and again, when we sit down to put together a budget, uh, we, would, we would take into account not only the, uh, the P&S items for salaries, for stipends, for all those things, we also look at the operations and maintenance, and we'd also look at, at capital items as well. Um, I mean, again, all the same process that we would use for any other city department. Mm -hmm. um, and again, still because this is a different, uh, because we are talking about a dedicated revenue stream, we also are required to track that separately as well. So any member of the fire department and the taxpayer will be able to see how much revenue the ambulance service has So that would be my next question. Any contractual benchmark using income for ambulance will still have that benchmark on the income side of the city budget. That's so correct. it will not get lost. Anything that's tied to ambulance receipts will still it's be, be honored. Because the fund goes away does not mean that that obligation goes away and that those, those revenues won't be tracked and that we would you know, we'd be very clear and easy to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and is it safe to say you don't have any intent to spend ambulance revenue funds elsewhere in the city other than fire? That's not the intent of this. No, that's not the intent of this. But I, it, it, to the question about receipts reserved for appropriation, 
um, no matter what account you set it up for, whether it's for ambulance, whether you set it up for parking, whether you set it up for recreate, whatever the purpose is under Mass General Law, um, it's still general fund monies, and it's still uh, you know subject to the legislature being able to appropriate that money for any municipal use. Um, I even have a I even have a letter from the Department of Revenue. Uh, uh, Regarding the city of Milford, who wanted town meeting wanted to use um, a receipt reserve account, and, and we were clearly told by the Department of Revenue that this is general, even though it's in a receipt reserve account, it's general fund money, um, and, and it requires the legislature to act on it. So, um, so yeah, that's the that's that's the purpose of this. Thank you. Yep. Is this reserve receipt account unique in that it's the only one that is referenced within one of our collective bargaining units? Uh, I don't, I couldn't tell you, answer you that question, because I don't think the other ones that we have probably is, yeah. probably is in that regard, yes. Okay. And the and reference I'm does specifically say to de the development of the, of the EMS program. Right, right, and um, I and guess my, I, and my, I guess my, my, my assertion is that the program is is developed. We fully developed it, and I believe that it is fully developed. And I actually think by bringing it into the general fund, if anything, cements that in terms of the city is now committed. This is no longer a, you know, a, um, something we're experimenting with, something <coughs> we're trying to see whether or not it can pay for itself. We're bringing this into the general fund. It's now going to be. This is a city function. We are we are a fire EMS department. So that's my that's my rationale in terms of why I think this is important. Um, one other um, one other piece of the uh, collective bargaining agreement that I guess is unique in terms of referencing a specific receipt reserve account is um, the Article Five to which. Uh, Mr. Hatch referred the oversight, um, and as we know, I, I, I guess I'm, you know we, we both you and I were on the public safety committee, and Councilor Murphy may have been as well during you know, a lot of the establishment of uh, the Northampton Fire Department taking over EMS and this whole program. So, um, well, one thing that I recall was that this was really presented as such a collaborative effort between the uh, personnel, uh, the local union, and the management and administration. And as I recall specifically, when we took over 100%, um, the, uh, the language of, of, the, of the oversight of the fund being a collaborative process was also um, really, really touted as a benefit of the program that all parties would, would be able to uh, sit down and have input into how the finances, budgeting, capital planning, all of that. Now, uh, I guess because that's part and parcel of the contract, it's difficult for me to um, see how we can actually um, just eliminate the fund without undermining the integrity of the contract as it stands. So that's that's my reservation with this specifically. Um, I also recall that at the time, uh, much was made of the fact that uh, there was uh, this was negotiated and the concession that was made on behalf of the personnel of the fire department, the local, were the step increases that year, 2009. So, um, that's one reason I have a, uh, a real reluctance to act on eliminating the fund, given the fact that, as Mr. Hatch uh, um, reminds us, it was part and parcel of the negotiated agreement. And I don't, I don't know. I, I would actually ask if this is something that you considered going back in and sitting down with the local and trying to negotiate terms. Uh, just a couple of quick comments. First of all, I just want to be clear that the fund existed prior to 2009, so the fund was there since 2003. It's not like the fund was created in 2009, number one. Number two, yes, there was an oversight committee, but not to oversee the fund, but to oversee
overseeing ambulance operations, to oversee capital. You know, if you read, it doesn't mention it's to oversee the fund, it's to oversee the operation of the ambulance. So <coughs> that it's on track. Where it's funded from, I don't think is spelled out. Um, I don't want to. Um, I don't really want to get into a discussion of collective bargaining, obviously, today, other than to say that um, that's obviously something that we're, we're in discussions about and hoping to, to have bring the parties back to the table. Um, again, I believe that this change does not, uh, it does not have those impacts that, we're, that you're concerned about, because, again, I believe that we're going to be honoring um, the aspects of the contract that involve both wages and salaries. I'm also, well, I guess I have concerns about whether or not, for example, a, a, uh, a fund that is established under Mass General Law that has very specific, you know, uh, guidelines can be the subject of a collective bargaining agreement, for example. Um, but I wasn't party to that agreement. I wasn't, uh, I, I wasn't uh, part of that negotiation. Uh, so that's just a question mark in my mind. Um, so that's that's really all I, I feel like I can say about that. I guess I would feel more comfortable having an, an answer to that question and um, having more work done around that, given the fact that it is written in the existing contract. Um, the reference to the EMS reserve account uh, to be used for future staffing and capital equipment. So, but anyway, that's what I'm looking at. Um, I guess first, Mayor, um, I'd like to, you know, I don't expect an answer now, obviously, but I'd like to certainly, you know, throw out the offer that we are more than willing to uh, enter into an impact bargaining session with the city um, outside of ongoing negotiations, outside of a successor agreement on that to, uh, to have this discussion. So, I'd, you know, really appreciate your consideration on that um, and hearing from me soon on that. Um, I have a, a point of contention on the fact that you state that this program is indeed fully developed. Um, at this point, we have a, an arbitration pending to be heard sometime, I believe, in May about advancing the program in the department towards phase three of what is called EMS development in our side letters, or our memorandums of agreement, which has, has not been met yet. So while I agree that this, the service itself is you know, doing a fantastic job for many of the reasons, and you know, a lot of the reasons are sitting here today, um, that we, we haven't quite attained all of the benchmarks and everything that we're, that we're looking for. So in the absence of, you know, really putting closure to, to attaining that phase three as it was agreed upon, I think that more, more discussion on the subject and a little bit more, you know, more time to investigate this thing would be, would be appropriate. Um, and my question is, and please forgive my ignorance on, you know, the, the ins and outs of city finance and budget. Um, if you could maybe explain what would happen or what, what would be your intent on uh, or the way you would handle a down year with revenue. As we said, it's a, a volume-based service with costs that are variable depending on collection rates, calls, employee costs, and other things, insurance reimbursements being another one. Um, how would the city, if this change was made, how would you, how would you handle a situation like that where our costs exceeded our, uh, our collections and receipts? Maybe I'll answer that one, and then I'll go back to the first one, just because that one's right in my mind right now. Clearly, if this was a general fund, it was a general fund operation. It's a service that we're providing to the public, and it's a public safety service. It's vital. Uh, if there was that kind of a shortfall, the city would have to absorb that. We have to absorb that. Uh, make sure that we continue to maintain the services and meet the meet the obligations that we have. So that would be my answer. I, you know. Have to understand the circumstances, what it entailed, but and I and, and actually, frankly, I think that's what we would do right now under the current system. If for some reason there was a problem or an issue, and the and the receipts reserve fund came up short, I don't think we'd stop providing ambulances. I think the city would say, you know, this is a service we like, we want, uh, it's vital, and, and we would find a way to fund it. Um, so I, I actually, I, you know, again, I think it's more. A diff and again, you can see looking across the, the Commonwealth, you know, half of the half the communities do it one way, half the communities do it another way, and I, I, it's it's more to me about uh, how we how we build our general fund and, and more of an accounting thing yeah. than an actual operational thing. Uh, you know, 
know, to the bargaining question, I mean, I, I do believe that uh, this Section 5 um, is, is something that's on the table because it's part of, you know, renegotiating a new contract, which I was hopeful and, and continue to be hopeful and have been repeating my request that folks come back to the table and, and discuss it. And I know we've been having some semantic arguments about that, and lawyers have been having arguments about that. But I, I feel like it's, a, it's part of, a, you know, the, the whole contract is something that we need to talk about. Um, so I mean, that's, that's why I leave that one. Just uh, a deputy <coughs> uh, Mayor Narkowitz, and then perhaps other members of the committee. I also just want to say my finance director, Susan Wright, is here too, if folks have questions. Uh, as someone who's been, who's on a day to day administering the city budget. So. Well, no, the, 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 the occasion I was wanting to have you both recall is one where um, we were doing a transfer um, at the end of the season to fund the payment of stipends that are agreed to in the contract. And there was quite a discussion at council about those stipends. Now those are contractually committed to stipends. But there was a discussion at council about would we or would we not vote to the for the transfer. Do you recall that circumstance? So here it's budgeted, the city's committed to do it, and yet the council could vote not to transfer the funds. Now I'm hopeful that this does end up on the general fund side and it's not in a reserve receipt account. We don't have to worry about that. Does that really concern me that we had that obligation and yet the council could hold up the transfer of funds to fund those stipends? And the year was complete, the amount had been calculated, and yet there was quite a discussion about whether we would or would not fund those stipends. And I'm assuming that's something that if this is on the general fund side would not occur, the money would be there, mm -hmm. and it would simply be a matter of transferring it to, you know, to meet that obligation. Most definitely. And I was one of the people who sat where you're sitting and argued that we had to fulfill that obligation. Uh, and, and so essentially what the way it would work, and we do do this with some other departments, is we would, before the end of the fiscal year, uh, you know, by the end of June, uh, we would encumber the funds to pay for those stipends even though we may not know what they are. The payment wouldn't actually be made in July, but we'd encumber mm -hmm. it in this fiscal year. Mm -hmm. It would be all plugged in, and mm -hmm. they would get paid. But by that point, at the end of the year, you know what the fund generated, you yeah. know what the obligation is under the contract for the stipends, and it could just be paid. It wouldn't be a matter of coming back here and having to fight for the transfer of council. You could just do it. Yeah. Exactly. Not and we do that with other, other, other uh, uh, units, other, other employees. Teachers will encumber funds to pay them beyond July 1st in the summertime. Uh, so it, it's, it, we would, that's what we would do. It does not change in any way. By removing that fund does not remove that obligation uh, or, or the need to budget for and pay for whatever contractual uh, obligations. Uh, and, and, and those funds are still identified in the line item on the income side of the budget. So it's quantifiable, measurable, and if it's any kind of benchmark in any contract, we still know what the number is. Yes, indeed. Councilor Sorry. Um, that's a really interesting point, Councilor. Um, however, let me ask, in that case, had we not, had this council voted to not transfer that money from the reserve receipt account into the general fund for payment, we would still have been obligated to pay. Isn't that correct? Interesting question because um, it just we would just have to pay out of the general fund and leave that other money in the end of, in the reserve receipt reserve account yeah. for specific EMS funds, but not for any other use. Okay. Is, Cardi, would you would the finance director be in a better position to answer that? And if so, would you think so? If so, I'll ask for a motion. I, I guess it would just set up an interest. It would set up an interesting question because again, it gets back to that question of the general fund and, and whether or not a receipts what what control the council has, or certainly they could vote no, just like they could vote no to fund any contract. Um, right. and we would, then it would be up to the city to try to figure out a way to fund it. Obviously, I can't fund anything without the council's approval. Uh, so we would have to, yeah, so. But it would eliminate this money being held hostage to meet obligations. It would require that when we set a budget at the beginning of the year that says we're going to have X number of fire EMS personnel and they're going to be funded you know, paid accordingly that that that, that would be a, a budgetary obligation that we would 
head. Um, exactly. You know, we would budget to cover those expenses just like we do, you know, we budget now for, you know, the police department to make sure that we cover all their um, uh, salaries and incentives, et cetera, just like we do for DPW, just like we do for teachers. Uh, exactly. Obviously, when the council votes on the budget, it could vote no on the budget. Mm -hmm. It could vote no, we don't want to fund those. You know, that's the right of the council. Um, any further questions for the mayor? I don't have any other questions. I just, you know, continue to say that I feel uh, reluctant to um, rescind this account presently just because it does exist in the collective bargaining agreement. And, um, while I don't disagree with the intention, and I don't disagree that we may need to do, it may even be legislatively inappropriate to, to have the, um, the fund, I think we need to look at um, bargaining out what was bargained in, if that that's, needs to be the case. But uh, I, don't, I don't think it's appropriate to just rescind what, what, what is presently written into the collective bargaining agreement. So that's just my position. I do have one more, just for you. Maybe Susan remembers it. My budget book's down in the other desk. What portion of the overall fire budget is this reserve account? It was what, just under $2 million? Of about a $5 million budget. Yeah. Yeah. About a $5 million. So it's a million. <coughs> okay. And we have a, we've always had a, you know, at the end of the year, because I know emergency response entities, you never know, you know, what you're actually, what your overtime costs are going to be, but we have consistently funded, you know, at the end of the year, whatever our actual costs were, depending on what came up during the year. And some years we have more fire incidents, some years we don't. We don't budget for the worst year, we budget in the middle somewhere and then, and then fill in the gaps at the end of the year. So I was just wondering what that percentage was, because I didn't recall. Mm -hmm. Did the city solicitor express any reservations to you about receiving the fund, even though it was created uh, via collective bargaining? Uh, well, again, I have to, uh, it was not created out of collective bargaining. Uh, it was meant, as he said, it's referenced in a collective bargaining agreement, but it was created in 2003. Um, and so it's created, again, as I think the order expresses, uh, when, a, when a program was, was being proposed and then developed. From, from a very part-time into a 50-50 and then into a full-time. Um, so uh, this is this is an issue that has been looked at. So the so solicitor has no reservations that it was referenced in the collective bargaining agreement? Uh, uh, Labor Council has looked <coughs> at it. And, uh, and again, I, I believe that, um, again, I was not part of that contractual negotiation, but um, whether that can be part, whether that can be part of, of an agreement is still an open question. these phase three VMS development. Um, this this may be referring to a uh, conversation I had with the chief actually late last year who um, we, we discussed the EMS receipt reserve account not with any intention, not with any mind one way or the other, but um, you know he he just he said that uh, the program is still being built out, and I was wondering if you could elaborate on what he might mean by that, and if that's maybe referenced in this phase three of EMS development. What what particular benchmarks are you concerned about? And, and this is a question for both of you, really. Uh, I think I'll take it for the start. Uh, as the mayor alluded to, EMS was developed in phases um, to ensure its sustainability, and if the service was going to work, it was going to meet the benchmarks um, to be, you know, self-supporting and that no, no additional cost to the city started as phase one, which was kind of a single unit primary is what we refer to it as. It was five days a week, one ambulance. Um, phase two was one ambulance, seven days a week for 12 hours. Um, 2009, things changed somewhat as we got to uh, take over it for the private provider that had broken their contract and released all 911 ambulance responsibility. Phase three, as we reference it, is 
additional staffing um, for safety on the fire side, adequate staffing for our engines. And if we get the ladder truck in service, we should be at a minimum of 13 firefighters for 24 hours in what we call the impact position, which is two firefighters for 12 hours a day, um, seven days a week. So from 8 in the morning to 8 p.m., they work a 12-hour shift, and we work everybody else who does the, the work day until the fourth. So we uh, have a pending arbitration case because we haven't been able to uh, resolve that through avenues within the city. And that is the, the final benchmark as it was bargained through our side letters of agreement. So that's a staffing level issue. It's a staffing level issue, yes, sir. Do you have anything to add? No, that was the main focus of that phase three was staffing, uh, then transitioning into other avenues in terms of what the personnel would want to do. There's a lot of different components besides the 911 service themselves, whether it was getting different contracts with other healthcare facilities, i.e. the hospital, healthcare facilities, non-emergency transfers, emergency transfers, IFTs, what role is going to play, if any, with all of those, um, and just more how to improve and make the service more efficient. So that's, that's something that the department is looking to do anyway. And to have the receipts for service count will be helpful in, in, trying, to, in trying to budget that. Not necessarily. The part we've always said, if you think about bullseye, the center of bullseye is the 911 response service, which we're currently doing 100% of the primary response unit. Then you start going outwards of that and what other role do we want to play? Um, a lot of it comes down to maintaining those core values of we have the 911 emergency response for EMS. On top of that is now we need to make sure we maintain adequate fire staffing. Then built, building out from that is, okay, do we have the capacity to do emergency transfers out of the hospital? And build out from that. So it's basically small steps as you slowly work out. So it's building capacity. Yeah, and... Right now, a lot of those roles are still undefined. What what is our true role outside of 911 emergency response? Um, how much, if any, are we going to do of emergency transfers? How much, if any, are we going to do of non-emergency transfers out of the hospital? Stuff like that. Um, we do a lot of advanced life support intercepts with surrounding communities. We do a lot of primary mutual aid for surrounding communities. What role are we going to continue to play? What role are we mandated to play? Things like that. Well, I have a question for uh, Mr. Hatch. Um, since we're here specifically dealing with the reserve account, are, are you and union concerned that if this, as, as the mayor says, is an accounting transfer, if this gets transferred from the reserve account to a line item in the general budget, that the city will divert these funds to some other department or spend them in another way that isn't related to fire in the fire service? Yeah, that's a concern of ours. We believe that the language was written in that manner with the intent that any collective revenue is going to be for fund EMS-related expenses as it relates to the fire department. Mm -hmm. um, some of that money has been, as I understand, you know, recently shifted over to uh, emergency first response units um, to get our, our engines to the paramedic level with some other things and outfits so we can kind of expand and I guess put more paramedics on the street to make them available to the community. Um, so any that money can be used for anything related to capital expenditures for EMS and staffing to provide to provide the service. And our concern is it becomes you know a line item budget so to speak that the money could go somewhere else and we could have some tighter constraints put on that program. Somewhere else outside of fire service or just being spent uh, rather than for we, EMS being spent for engines or for some other we, fire related service. To this point because we haven't. I guess completed the build out of EMS. We haven't, you know, we made a lot of concessions over the years to, to move the program forward. Um, while, you know, we've got some more total people, total bodies on the shift, I guess for lack of a better way to describe it, um, our staffing per piece has declined somewhat in some instances. Um, like I mentioned before, you know, our ladder truck, you know, the only thing with the tools and equipment to, you know, make it to the roof of the McDonald House, um, not seldom in service because we've made that transition for the ambulances, you know, our, our engines who prior to EMS used to have four people on them um, on a typical day only have three. You know, our, mm -hmm. our efficiency on our job is really predicated on having, you know, boots on the ground in order to do the job. Mm -hmm. And our concern is that if that money goes away, um, you know, there's going to be some limitations that we currently currently don't have. Um, once, you know, we achieve the build out as we've described it, um, you know, we'd love to discuss other options. It'd be great if we could you know, build up enough money
money so we don't have to lease ambulances. We can buy them out right from the get go. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we certainly, you know, we, you know, as the chief mentioned in his memo, you know, we've got an aging fleet of fire apparatus that hasn't been able to be replaced. You know, we'd certainly love to entertain that discussion. It'd be great if we could, you know, buy an engine. I believe um, the community of West Springfield just did that with their ambulance money. Mm -hmm. um, so it's satisfactory as long as all of these funds are spent within the fire service. Or does it have yeah, to be? I would kind of use the, the bullseye analogy yeah. that, that the Chief Norris used. You know, its primary purpose is for EMS, and as long as we've achieved the build out on EMS, the EMS needs are met. If there are other related things within the firehouse that you know we could fund internally without having it come out of a you know, capital plan or some other source, um, you know, I don't think you get much objection from us on that. Because yeah. I know being on capital improvements, even when we do spend EMS money on capital improvements for uh, ambulance matters, it still goes through capital improvements committee. I know you've been there to say, you know, here's here's our things, here's the list of things we want, and here's you know, the sort of money we have in that account, and this is where we'd like to, to spend it. It, build, it still requires a transfer vote, which is different from some of the other things that we maybe spend general fund money on our bond, but it's, it's, it's different. Um, as I know that was one thing that was mentioned when we put EMS equipment on the engines, that the department's so cross-trained now, it would be really fortunate to have an engine respond first and have trained emergency medical te technicians or paramedics there that don't have the equipment to help somebody because they have to wait for an ambulance to arrive from another scene. So, yeah. so just so that I do understand it, you know, the concern is that these funds might be diverted outside of the fire service, but if they remain in the fire service, that's acceptable. You know, we kind of use the analogy of if I'm going to buy you a cup of coffee, mm -hmm. if I take a dollar out of my right pocket or my left pocket, yeah. either way, I buy you a coffee and the money's mm -hmm. spent. You know, you can't you can't spend it twice. Mm -hmm. So we don't. I guess we we fail to see the need to make such an action. Mm -hmm. If the equipment is still going to be purchased, if the staffing is still going to be, mm -hmm. ad, you know, adequate or funded. So if there is a way to to assure the union that this accounting practice of taking it from the reserve account and making it a line item in the general fund will not result in that money being diverted to other municipal expenses, but it would remain within the fire service, that would make it a more comfortable? Our ultimate concern is the, the long-term you know, safety and viability of the mm -hmm. program to make sure that it's going to be there. You know, like I said, we've got 24 families who you know, pay their bills mm -hmm. off of, you know, I guess, uh, you know, off of that account. That's you know, so where their salaries and all expenses associated with them mm -hmm. come from. Um, you know, the equipment that we have, you know, it's kind of a slippery slope if you start, you know, kind of tic-tacking and taking some of that money away. As soon as that, that happens, then, you know, the, you know, the equipment suffers, patient care suffers, morale suffers, liability, other, you know, other things come up. And, you know, you know we take a, a, a lot of pride in what we do. You know, we think we do it better than anybody else around here. Mm -hmm. And we take a lot of pride in that. And, you know, ultimately our goal is to maintain the program for eternity. And, you know, if, if that can't happen for, you know, mm -hmm. if we have to, you know, take the money away or whatever, whatever happens, you know, we, we, again, respectfully ask that our contract language be adhered to. Mm -hmm. and, you know, again, you know, mm -hmm. made the offer to, to bargain over that and separate that from other ongoing issues. But mm -hmm. our, our ultimate goal is to maintain the program for, mm -hmm. for well, I know from my, just from my own opinion, it's a good and valuable service. I recall when it, when it clicked over to really full-time service, wanting to come in and talk about, you know, what would it do to overtime, and, and the, you were all very good about that, and I'm very pleased with the way the service works. So I know, for one, I have no desire to see uh, to see that fund not used for that purpose. I think it's proven itself. It works very well, and, uh, and it provides an excellent service. I think we have better service now than we did before we transitioned to full-time fire department ambulance. So. I just, I, I have to also just add, though, that I was having this discussion about ambulance service, et cetera, but I, you know, again, this is a, this department belongs to the taxpayers of Northampton. I mean, the taxpayers built the department, they built the station you work out of, sleep out of, I mean, with, and the taxpayers pay for a lot of the equipment, a lot of the, you know, most of the personnel. But I, I just have to make sure that we keep that kind of big picture in mind, which is what I have to try to balance and represent as well. Um, and that's part of why I'm trying to put together a budget that allows us to be able to do that. Um, so I just felt like I had to add that as well. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, you have your employees, families that are 
counting on that, I get that as well. But it's also part of this larger picture um, that it's the city of Northampton that's on the side of those ambulances, and we're <coughs> we're paying your health care, we're paying you know, all that other expenses that you may not factor into that. I also have to factor into when I'm trying to put together the budget of the city. But but this accounting transfer is not to divert those funds to other city activities. Mm -hmm. It's simply to streamline budgeting to not have to worry about the money being held up in a transfer to pay. That is correct, but I, but I guess I have to also say that this council could divert monies from any any general fund purpose if an emergency arose. If it was an emergency in the ambulance department, you know, if, if, like we were discussing the hypothetical before, if there was an emergency or if there was a shortfall, we could divert funds. Um, uh, that's why I want to just make sure we that we keep sort of on that same set of facts that this ultimately is all general fund monies. Um, we may keep it in separate lock boxes, but it's all general fund and it all belongs to the taxpayers of North Carolina. Councilor Carney. So if I could just clarify then to it. Um, I think what you're saying is it's the intention. The intention here is to keep this receipt reserve fund of what was once if this is rescinded, um, to keep this line item in the general budget uh, dedicated to fire and ambulance. That's the intention, but it could be used, it could be used for other purposes. If and, 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 and I believe that could happen now, and obviously there's an argument, there's a debate, and well, I don't, it's not really a debate, but it's a, a subject of uh, some discussion, um, whether in fact monies could be diverted, uh, you know, to pay for other things beyond just EMS, uh, which it has because of uh, financial constraints. Um, and so that's a, that's something that will have to be settled in another venue. But I guess I have to just assert that we're talking about different budgetary categories and different ways, but it's ultimately this is the city of Northampton <coughs> fire EMS department is the way I approach it. Uh, not a separate EMS department and a fire department. I really believe it's, it's an integrated department um, and that we should uh, budget accordingly. Um, I just want to review where, where my thinking is, um, and I, I actually want to ask for some comment, but uh, basically I have two issues. One is to make sure that New Hampton achieves a high le level of public safety, um, and, uh, and the second is that the um, that in the pursuit of that public safety, Responsible financial decisions are made. So, uh, Mr. Hatch, you mentioned fiscal responsibility actually a couple times in your, um, in your remarks, and uh, you know the council is often accused of being fiscally irresponsible. But, uh, I've yet to really been able to put my finger on any particular bad expenditure, but uh, I have to say that you know the desire for money can pervert any intention. Um, but I'm just, I want to narrow in on this fiscal responsibility because I haven't heard that much heretofore that has talked about actual material decline in public safety. Um, I hear concerns about it, but I haven't heard anything um, that would show me that an accounting change like this would produce material declines at least in the, in the next few years. So really what I'm trying to focus on is, is financial and maybe fiscal responsibility. And how, I, I guess what I want to hear is, um, because I'm, I'm, I'm new here, uh, I want to hear sort of how, and from the mayor as well, how the, um, the difference between having a receipts reserve account having it in the general fund would be as far as fiscal responsibility goes. Uh, and let me just clarify by saying that um, you mentioned that uh, you, you felt some of the expenditures from the fund, I don't want to get into particulars, but you felt some of them might not have been appropriate. Um, is that going to happen more or less because it's in the general fund and the council has to review it? Will it happen the same amount? Um, I know for sure that uh, when it comes to uh, 
um, psychology, you know, if you have money in the in in the fund, you know, and there's there's the budget item that that's that's on the table, you're gonna say, oh, well, if there's money for it and it seems like it's a good thing, let's let's buy it, you know, let's do it. Um, that's psychology, but uh, so I just I want to find out what I want to hear hear the perspectives on 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 financial responsibility and and how there may be a difference between keeping it in a receipts reserved account versus the general fund. And, and we're, I, I don't know if, if you want to speak first about it. I brought I, I address you specifically. So. Okay, um, I guess I can't speculate on what on the differences between the email <coughs> reserve account and if that money was taken to the general fund. Obviously that. That decision, I guess, would be made, you know, by the council whether to transfer the money, not transfer the money, for that. Um, our issues with fiscal responsibility, I guess, are more internal. Um, one of the reasons, or one of the, the ways we, we think that it's been a failure, I guess, to this point, and something that's inconsistent with the values, is that the oversight mechanism that's outlined in our contract, that there's supposed to be a, you know, the, our EMS committee, which has been really fledgling since 2009. Um, He's been able, you know, supposed to be able to make recommendations on the what's and the why's of things. Um, there's also an article that might is uh, part of our contract, Article Two, which is management rights, which says the management is responsible for, you know, running the ship. We can say the what's, the why's, you know, what we think about it, but ultimately the decision lies with them. Um, you know, you, you ask that I don't get into the, some of the pertinence and the this and that of things, and I'll respect your request um, to just. So I guess summarize things by saying that if you, you look over some of the press releases and some of the, the correspondence that we've had with the council or the media or whoever, that there have been some, I think, liberties taken with some of the, the EMS money to buy what we term as nice to haves and not needs to haves. And if that money wasn't available, there wouldn't have been a request for a transfer um, to spend that money. So we, we feel that there has been a failure of, of the process and not not having a degree of oversight, and I've you know, only recently learned that, the, that you know, this body is more of a, a liaison and not a, I'll say, decision-making body, but I think, I think you understand where I'm going, that, you know, so that there hasn't been a lot of questions. There's a presentation made on, you know, we'd like to buy this equipment. If it seems reasonable to the council, then they say, okay, without a lot of diligence in investigating, what is it, what's it replacing, what's it need, what's needed. So in our opinion, there's been some liberties taken with some of that money that is not really in the best interest of, I guess, the bottom line in adhering to Article 5, which says that we are going to budget surpluses going forward to be used for kind of lean times or, you know, un unforeseen things. So I guess that is, is a summary that's probably the best I can give you. Mr. Mayor? Whether or not I feel one system would be yes. Uh, well, I definitely take your psychology. Uh, you know, that's a, it's a that's a valid point. I can't really speak to the perceptions within the department. I mean, clearly, uh, and I could let uh, the assistant chief speak to this. My, my impression was that when uh, when some of these uh, purchases, I'm not specifically which ones you're referring to, that they're have been internal committees and there have been uh, discussions around uh, some of these uh, capital purchases. That's the way that it's been presented. Um, I, can't, I don't know much. I don't know other than that. Like you said, it's it's stuff that happens internally, so I, I can't really speak to what's happened prior to my time here. Um, so I'd have to let them speak about it. Again, I I, I feel like we we're in an environment right now. In municipal government and state government and you know pick your level of government where we have to scrutinize every purchase um, and uh, whether it's the fire department, the police department, the school department, whatever it is um, and I'm committed to making sure that we have the controls in place to do that and, and we're going to work with department heads to make sure that we do that so that we, we do bring things forward to the council uh, that, it, that it meets that scrutiny. Uh, I can't really speak for what's happened in the past but just what I intend to do moving forward, and I do believe that uh, that this system will will allow us to be able to have the same level of scrutiny we need to have. Uh, you know, within the 
contract, there certainly is an oversight uh, group committee in there that, uh, you know, I think in the inception and in, in the early stages of the program, it, it met and did very well, uh, really having a discussion and really looking out for the good of the program. I think as of late, it, it has broken down uh, with some communication in there, uh, but the intent really was to, you know, have the, those internal discussions over purchases and, and needs and where we're going with the department. And the program uh, had the discussion there and look for kind of the buy-in and the input from from the group. Uh, and I think as of late, it, it probably has broken down, and there isn't the communication that that really should be there. Just to follow up to that, mm -hmm. Assistant Chief, um, the fact that things may have broken down as of late, in your opinion, um, wouldn't be reason for. Uh, taking that um, collaborative language for, for eliminating that process, would it? I mean, do you see value in the process of labor and management working together? Oh, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. I mean, I, you know, I, I think, you know, whether the, the council and the mayor choose to, you know, dissolve the account or not, I would hope that committee, that oversight group would certainly stay there. It's needed, I think, for just a working relationship between management and labor, and uh, you know, it just proves beneficial. I think that you know we're looking out for the good of the program and input from the people working it, and certainly from the management perspective, uh, to try to you know work through issues and certainly set some goals for the program and where we want to go. That's a little, and just a how would how would that communication be affected? Back to the question at hand. Mm -hmm. How would that communications of a committee that maybe functioned better in the past or is going to function again and is in its objective reflect to whether this money is in a receipt reserve account or whether it's accounted for in the general fund? Well, I think that's kind of our role as management is that we need to communicate that, uh, you know, whether it's in that account or not, you know, from this question, it really doesn't matter. But I think it's from management's points that we need to make the arguments so that the mayor and the council can hear those concerns and needs that we have out there. And, and that would be the hope of, of mine that, you know, would come out of this committee that we represent certainly the body and the department mm -hmm. and can express to the, the committee, the, the uh, council and the mayor, of what our needs are and what we need, you know, to keep the program running efficiently and effectively. were asked to um, forego staff increases that year. And I think it, it ended up being that it was really the fire department did take the, um, for, did forego the staff increases. And part of that was a very in-depth discussion about taking on the um, EMS service. And uh, other, um, other units did not. That was the year we had the Prop two and a half override, so the um, school department, school department employees, the teachers, um, uh, did not take the step in. I mean, did not forego their raises. Uh, DPW did. Is that correct? Is that right, Mayor? Mm -hmm. DPW did forego their raises as well in 2009. Uh, yes. It was the teachers who, who did not, and um, and I believe the police department given the fact that they were losing the Quinn. Okay. So it just puts it in some context there in terms of um, um, the contract at the time. And, but this language already existed in the contract, the uh, oversight and the... But this language, if I can, um, was part of the 2007-2010 agreement was when it started, so it all was prior to the... Yes. Okay. And this was in the 2007 agreement, the yes. oversight committee. Yes. Okay. And the reference to the EMS in the beginning, to the reserve receipt account. Okay. Okay. Um, I just add on to 
Councilor Carney's point that in addition to giving back the, the step raises and freezing for that year, our, our bargaining unit also gave back a negotiated 3% raise. Um, the, the, the sum total for those two things was over $100,000 that our local gave back to the city, which has given back every year since, which has kind of solidified the, the buy-in, I guess, that we have and the investment that we have in this program and how you know important it is to us um, to make you know in a tough economy for everybody to give back you know when equals you know six percent for some of our members in the step system and if I could also just read an excerpt from our contract um, under the EMS oversight committee again article five responsibility this committee will meet on a quarterly basis in order to oversee EMS finances budgeting capital planning quality control and operations as well as to perform a semi-annual audit evaluation of the program so I guess um, again you know, it's just it's been tossed around here that that is a vital function for us. Um, we were around at the inception of it, and it, I think it pretty well states in, in black and white there that if there's going to be any changes to it, that it really should be a, a collaborative discussion in it. And, um, you know, the result of, of some type of, of meeting or sit down between the parties who signed. Anyone else? Second. Well, actually, I don't think there's a motion on the table. No. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'll, I'll make a motion. Is there a second? I make a motion that the committee recommends the order as the first. Second. Discussion? Um, I, I, I agree that this is something that would be best worked out through the uh, negotiation process and would encourage I'd actually vote against rescinding the, uh, the account right now if, if the argument is that it doesn't really make all that much difference then I would rather wait to uh, see this be carefully and deliberately negotiated through the collective bargaining process um, and so I'll vote against it I, I do see it more as an accounting procedure um, than anything else. As long as those funds remain strictly identified on the income of the budget, which they will be, I think they provide a satisfactory benchmark to what this contract refers to or whatever any future contract may refer to. And while, while I may be a little bit disappointed that the, the committee you talked about is not functioning the way you perceive it to be functioning, I think as long as the money is identified so that whatever benchmarks are in this or any other contract can be adequately can be adequately used to fulfill the financial obligation that they create in the contract, that I, I don't necessarily have a problem with it. I did, though, have a problem with the potential for that budget transfer not happening. You know, the city has made a contractual obligation to the union, and the fact, you know, that we could not vote for that transfer and hold up those stipends being paid really did bother me. As long as we keep track of where that money is, I think that flexibility is important to me. Um, that we, we that it, politics can't hold up the city's fulfilling that obligation to its employees. So that's the that's the reason I, I would support it. Um, I take uh, the counselor from what one's comments very seriously as well, and um, you know what this vote does. I think it really is, in some ways, an accounting change, but that it's done while negotiating a new contract um, definitely gives the administration. I think. I, I think gives the administration more leverage. Um, So if, if the administration is comfortable legally with thinking that this doesn't affect the current uh, contract because the contract is under negotiations, it's hard to know when this would happen again. 
if the, if the next contract's five years, you can't take away the receipt reserve account for five years, then you know it could be 2018 before this conversation comes up again. Um, so I think the vote, I think, I think this decision would in fact be uh, extra leverage to the given to the, um, at the at the collective bargaining table, which I'm hesitant to do. Um, I also think that there's a lot of psychology at play here. Um, you know, financial transactions should be just simply uh, dollars and cents, but uh, you know, when you have your own, as, as the mayor said, lockbox. I, I don't know if it, I, would, I wouldn't call it the lockbox. I don't want to invoke Al Gore here or anything, but uh, you know, I, I just say it's a specific pocket you put you put your money in. You feel like it shouldn't leave that pocket um, unless it's going to be used for the reason that you put it there. Um, so I think I think there's some psychology at play here too, and so it's hard for me to. Uh, separate out the finance from the psychology. It's also very disappointing to me that that committee, which really should be some of the internal control on uh, on what comes before the council, um, or the, either through capital improvements or otherwise, has not been uh, as effective as it should have been. Um, you know, capital improvements and expenditures are something that people really can get uh, happy, can, can, can really enhance the working environment and uh, how you do your job or, or can be seen as wasteful and, and can be a, a, a real stain on uh, a process and on a, on a, um, on a council and on, 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 a, on a department. So, you know, that disappoints me. I wish there was something, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know if there's, if there's another way to constitute um, the capital uh, the capital improvements process that also incorporates that kind of you know some sort of internal discussion or, or something like that I, I I hope there is um, <coughs> but my vote to rescind is uh, really because I think that uh, it may be it may be a little premature, but uh, now might be the time, given that uh, we have a um, given that the the, pro the program is well established, uh, not perfect but well established, and uh, we may not get another chance for a long time. So. Um, I'd just like to reiterate the offer that I've, you know, extended to, to these folks and to the mayor to uh, separate this from the ongoing contract negotiation. Um, we don't have a head of date schedule for a variety of reasons. Um, that date was, was canceled and going to be attempted to be rescheduled. Um, but I'd like to just reiterate the offer that we have to, to separate this and make it its own standalone issue to be addressed as a subject of impact bargaining with the city um, at the soonest convenience of the parties to address the concerns and with respect to the mayor's desire to complete the 2013 budget. Um, Mr. Hatchett, I don't have any problem with that. Um, whether we recommend it, I mean, our recommendation simply goes to the council. Um, the council takes two readings on it, so there's still time. Um, I, 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 don't, I really don't have any particular issue. I don't, I don't think that's a mistake. I, I don't think that's a bad policy. And this, if this comes out, if you're recommended, it's not going to hit the council till the second meeting in April anyway. Right. So it, it, this is going to continue on into May, even if it does get recommended. You can't get it on this week's agenda. So it's going to be another over a month before this gets dealt with it completely at the council. Further discussion?
passes 3-1. Agenda item number seven, new business.